Welcome back to Pennsylvania Outdoor Life. We're collecting photos, keep sending them to us, and we will eventually get people and places back on the air. But right now we're gonna go back up to Bradford County and the Susquehanna River in that event. I've gotta tell you, the Susquehanna River Basin Commission was on hand, and Aaron Henning was doing some fish shocking, and Doug Rhodes from the Bradford County Conservation District was there talking about eels. My name's Aaron Henning. I'm a fisheries biologist with the Susquehanna River Basin Commission. Uh, right here, we're doing a electrofishing demonstration for Northeast Bradford School District. Today, I'm here doing boat electrofishing. So if you can see in the background or later on, uh, there'll be footage of us using our electrofishing boat. It's one of the methods we use to capture and assess fish populations in the Susquehanna Basin. So people walk up here and they see jars with all kinds of fish. They, I, we got the reaction of, ooh, or oh my God. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, so those are um, specimens we keep from our uh, teaching collection and we've, it's kind of migrated into an educational collection now. So with the smallmouth bass uh, health issues that were going on in the early 2000s, um, I was working at Penn State for the Fish Museum there and they had pulled, the Fish Commission requested a bunch of our smallmouth bass samples so they could look at any historical incidences of the anomalies that were showing up in the early 2000s. Right. So that's one example of why you would keep voucher specimens. They're also good for uh, learning fish identification too. So when it's alive and flopping around, it's a lot more difficult to learn than when it's, um, you know, sitting completely still and you can put it under a microscope. But it is pretty cool when you electroshock those, you bring them in, these kids get to hand, handle them, they get to see it up close. Absolutely. Um, so this is a good opportunity for kids to see fish that they otherwise wouldn't get to see. So it's great to see kids get to expose um, themselves to different life stages of fish as well as a different variety of fish species that aren't the common uh, game fish that you're going to see. Can I hold one? Sure. So here is a yeah, white now. sucker. Oh, it's uh, it's, benthic, like it's a sucker, so it eats off the bottom. Compare that with, this is a red breast sunfish. Um, so he's got a terminal mouth. So he'd be eating, you know, fish out of the water, fish or uh, macros out of the water column. There's a bluegill sunfish. So he's got spines. I'm certainly welcome to hold them. Real common, uh, real taller. I guess you guys have, maybe you have one in your tank, I heard, at school. And then this guy. Oh, look at oh, that wow. one. That one's so cool. So that's a little juvenile rock bass. So here's one of the nicer ones. It's maybe a 16 inch smallmouth bass. Oh, that is cool. Sure. You want to get a picture with him? And then here's a big white sucker. So, like that one that I pulled oh, out before. Oh, yep. Oh, you get a good idea of how he can eat off the bottom with oh, that yeah. mouth. Just, Wait, that's so you can go swim along and just suck anything off there. You want to, anybody want to hold him? Yep. Ah, look at it. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> and so here's his baby brother. Same species. Oh, it's the same. Yep. Okay, yay. Take that. Yep. Oh, it's so slimy. So the Susquehanna River Basin Commission, you, you've got a program, you had mentioned it, eel, Eels in the Classroom. Yes. First of all, um, how successful has that program been, and do you expect it to keep growing? I do. Uh, I kind of started as an experiment a few years ago just to see if um, eels could handle living in a classroom and if students would enjoy it. And it started with just two, and now we're up to over 40 potential participants um, all schools within Pennsylvania in the Susquehanna River Basin. Uh, we, it's basically to complement the, the American eel restoration that's going on in the Susquehanna Basin um, through the relicensing of the hydroelectric plants on the lower basin. Uh, we came to an agreement with their owners to basically trap and transport American eels for uh, a very long time into the future to try and restore them because they used to be here before the dams were uh, much like American shad they need. Uh, free access to the, the upstream habitat. Dan Rhodes is with the Bradford County Conservation District and he raised eels as part of the program and brought them along to be released. American eels, believe it or not, are they're a keystone species for uh, the Susquehanna River and most of our freshwater tributaries. Uh, because they actually are really fundamentally critical uh, to the reproduction of and survival of freshwater mussels. Most people don't know what either eels or mussels really are <laughs> because most of the, bo both of those two are hard to find because uh, freshwater mussels, they're filter feeding animals. Okay. 
um, kind of like a clam or an oyster. And they're so important because they actually clean up um, our, our waterways. American eels are the main reproductive host for the freshwater mussels. No kidding. Yeah, the mussels, they put up a lure in the water, they're on the bottom, they put up a lure to trick the eels into coming over and investigating, and then they spray their larvae onto the gills of the eel. And it doesn't kill the eel, the eel swims away, the larvae will, um, will attach there and they'll just uh, get nutrients from the eel, and then when they're ready, they'll drop off to form a new freshwater mussel bed. Talk about a relationship, huh? Yeah. So eels hard to find. Uh, uh, there are no eels in, Pen in Pennsylvania to I mean, speak of, right? They're, they're around, but they're, they're, they're very hard to find. Sure. Mostly because they can't migrate anymore. Right. So they're, they're, a, they're a catadromous fish, correct? Yeah. So they spend their whole adult life up here and then go to the ocean. Yep. So we stop that with the dams. Yep. So we're still, we're working on all of that, all of that, but you're reintroducing these. Yep. Why? Well, I mean, for a few different reasons. Number one, I mean, they're they're an extremely valuable fish. They used to be uh, there used to be a commercial eel fishery here in Bradford County and pretty much everywhere in Pennsylvania. You can see remnants uh, from Google Earth. You can even find remnants of eel weirs, um, Native American ones. So, uh, the history of of the eel as a very important um, commercial fish for for culinary reasons is really well established, but for, but also, um, like I was saying, you know, the presence of the eels in every section of the river really can enable the reintroduction or, or the, the, uh, yeah, the, the reestablishment of the mussels and then many other fish species that maybe are struggling that used to be here. So it's, it's a domino effect. So this is the biggest one. Whoa, it's like impossible to hold it. There he goes. Right to the bottom. Poor eel. What do you mean poor eel? He's, <laughs> he's going to live a good life in the river now. No, they're like really hard to get. Oh, we got two that time. If anybody wants more information on the eels in the classroom program. Yes, uh, go to our website, srbc.net. We have a American Eels page specifically, and within that there's a Eels in the Classroom page where you can uh, put in your contact information, and that'll send an email directly to me. That Eel in the Classroom program, second to none. It's not too late. Get a hold of the Susquehanna River Basin Commission to find out more about that program. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. <laughs> 